Do you think consciously about the idea, I know people who make Hollywood movies think like this, uh, and you know a bit about that because I think your dad was a script writer for yeah, Hollywood, he that's was. right, which is they think what they call jeopardy. They think yeah. a peril. Yes. In other words, that even in a comedy, mm. you want a moment where you think, oh no, is that going to happen? Now, do you yeah. think like that with your character? So you've got, what do you want, which you've told us, this motive thing, and then is someone going to help you or is someone going to get in your way and you've got to get them out of the way and that's going to be quite funny. But is there a moment of danger that you want to bring in, which, as I say, the Hollywood people call jeopardy or peril? I'm probably not conscious enough as a writer, but I think instinctively I do that um, because there's always peril. You know, Henry is sneaking downstairs to rob the cookie jar, you could say. So the peril would be, oh, the, the stairs are squeaking. Is someone going to be there ahead of him? How yeah. is he going to avoid being caught? Yeah. I mean, I've watched children as I'm reading them and they're like this. That's what you want. You that's, absolutely that's want. That's the jeopardy. So you want to allow yourself to put your characters in jeopardy. Sometimes I feel a little protective and you've got to just knock that out. This, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to allow them to experience the danger and the fun. I mean, I mostly write comedy. Yeah, but um, even so, you've, comedy, yeah. danger can be funny. Of course, it yeah. is funny. But also, yeah. what makes it also funny is that, in, that Henry wants things so badly. But of course, it changes from, from story to story. The thing he wants more than anything in the world is this. And then he's on to the next thing already. Yes. Or yeah. that he doesn't want. There's a shopping one where his mother tries to make him wear, you know, horrible, horrible trousers that he insists are girls trousers and he doesn't want to wear them and they're hor they're checked and horrible and you know I forget even how he gets himself out of this so they they ordinary situations played for laughs but with a kind of deeper idea about yeah about all these sides of 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 kids and about also how you know parents kind of need to look at themselves about mm. not having endlessly talking about criticizing them you know, that, there's a that famous there's a famous story by Nora, I think it's Nora Ephron and the whole story is parents criticizing their kids all day <laughs> and saying have you practiced your cello get your elbows off the table stop slurping when are you going to eat your vegetable and you can as a parent I'm sure you can kind of hear that dialogue in yeah. your head where that's literally all you're saying to your kid but then of course with books you always have to get rid of the parents yeah so, so they, you, with you, that you get rid of them and then they come back in again at, at various moments because they're yeah. they're present. But that's what one reason Moody Margaret lives next door to Horrid Henry because she's his big enemy and nemesis. And that way they can have the freedom to jump over the walls of each other's gardens. Otherwise, yes. you know, Henry's pretty young. He wouldn't just run out the front door and run across town. So if she lives next door, they can have a lot of interactions without the parents supervising. Very good. Very neat. Francesca Simon. Thanks ever so much indeed. Thank you. That's lovely that Thank you, you Michael. To talk to us. Now, it would be great if you subscribed. That is, you become a subscriber. Look out for the subscribe button. What happens, you see, is that I make new vids every few months and then I post them up one a week 